here is video eight of a twisted tale of hard work and man it's been hard work getting through this chapter has it not here's our final notes slides 47 through 50. let's get this done so really what we're wanting to do is bring an end to our kind of growing understanding of what we do that affects our dna which we've kind of explored in our last video of the things in our life that can damage our DNA or change it. And number four, which was um, learning about illness or possible results of mutations. Um, knowing that mutations are changes to DNA, that changes proteins. And if you change the protein, you change what it does for us. And if you change what it does for us, it could lead to good or bad things like illness. All right, let's move on to slide 47. So in your notebook, please write slide 47 and get this definition. It says mutation is any change to the DNA sequence or nucleotides. All right, next thing in your notebook is to copy down this mRNA code. Notice it's in threes. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. Because this is a codon, 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 and codon. Now, get this down and then translate it using this code here. Now, normally the code is amino acids, but this is just for fun. It's different words. So the code on CCU codes for the word I. So in the first blank in your notebook, you would write I, and then it's AAG. AAG want. So the second word would be want. So AAG code on codes for the word want. UCC. U C C two. So you say I want two. So the third word is two. U U C, which is U U C. I want to learn. So I want to learn. And then the final word is C U U. Oh, and it says genetic. So C U U is the word genetic according to this right here. So it's I want to learn. And you would say genetics. I'm so glad you want to learn genetics. Me too. All right. Well, let's say we change one single nucleotide. So the original RNA code or codon was CUU. But let's say we mutated it and changed the C to a G. So it was GUU now. What we need to do is construct the new protein. So what's the new phrase? So it's going to be I want to learn. But what's the new word? GUU. Oh, it changed to science. So it still is a positive message. You still want to learn science. It's great. So the mutated code is, I want to learn science. So in your notebook, for number one, you need to write the new message, which would be, I want to learn science, because the G replaced the C. And it says, summarize the cause. Use the words nucleotide and RNA to explain how this happened. And then finally, three, it says, hypothesize the new effect of the protein. So if the sentence says, and so the original protein was, I want to learn genetics, but the new protein after this mutation of the single nucleotide was, I want to learn science. What's the new message? Is it good, bad, same? So make a hypothesis about the result. What is the, what is the result in this new message? Is it a bad message? Was it a bad change? What do you think? All right, come up with an answer. Slide 48 gives us an example of two forms of mutations that I want us to learn about. In our activity, we learn that there's different forms of mutation. You can do substitution mutations, otherwise known in our textbook as point mutation, or you can do something called a frame shift mutation, and that's when you add a new nucleotide to DNA, or you delete, uh, delete a nucleotide in DNA. Check this out though, if you just do a point mutation, if you just change one nucleotide, you don't remove it, you don't delete it, you just change it from one nucleotide to another, it will only affect one amino acid out of these total of nine. So there's nine total amino acids here, right? Let's make sure, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, sorry. So in the original protein, there was 10 amino acids that bonded together to form the protein. Now, if you delete, I'm sorry, in this example we add it. So if you add an A nucleotide to the original DNA, 
which is a form of mutation. It's called a frame shift mutation. Look what it did now. Compare this, still SER, but every single amino acid after that is completely different from the original protein. If you just changed one amino acid, the original amino acid uh, was something, but the mutation caused it to be PHE. But if you add a nucleotide, in other words, you create a frame shift mutation, you not only change this second nucleotide, or so this second amino acid, but you change all the others after. So you can see frame shift mutations create a much bigger effect and change the overall protein big time compared to what's called a point mutation, which really only affects one amino acid. It could still be good, could still be bad, but for sure the protein is definitely changed when you add or delete a nucleotide. And if it's an important protein, you definitely don't want that to happen. Let's study the two different types we just talked about. Let's, let's look at point mutation. So go ahead and pause the video and, and get the definition down for point mutation. It's a change in a single nucleotide base pair. Example, an A and a T in DNA could be changed to a G and T, where the A is replaced with a G, and that's a point mutation, where a single nucleotide is changed. And then in your notebook, go ahead and write A, B, and C, and then explain, is A a point mutation or something else? Is B a point mutation or something else? And is C a point mutation or something else? I'll help you with A. Let's check it out. So in A, it shows. So in A, it shows adenine getting changed to cytosine. So a single nucleotide change. So A is a point mutation because the A was changed to a C. Just one nucleotide was altered. Let's look at B. Now to know if B example is a point mutation or something else, you have to count all the nucleotides on this side and see if it's the same number here. If the nucleotides are the same here and it's the same number on this side, we have the same number here and here, we know it's probably a point mutation. So let's count them up. We get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 nucleotides on this side. Let's see how many are on the other side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There is one less nucleotide on this side. There's 12 here. There's 11 on this side. That means one nucleotide was deleted. That is not a point mutation. So B is something else. B would be an example of a frame shift mutation. So A is a point mutation because the nucleotide was changed from an A to a C, but B is not a point mutation because one nucleotide over here was deleted, and that's called a frame shift mutation for B. And let's finish this one out. Example C shows it's a TAGC, and then let's figure out what we have. It says TAG, I'm sorry, it says TAC, so it was a G, and now the nucleotide's a C. That is a change in a single nucleotide base. So therefore, example C is a point mutation. A point mutation, B not a point mutation, it's frame shift mutation. And then C is again a point mutation because the G was changed to a C. What's interesting is that albinism in mice is reported to be caused by a single change in a nucleotide. So one of those nucleotides changed in all the trillions of nucleotides caused this entire cell, uh, this entire mouse to have no melanin pigment in its cells. Crazy. Just one change has that big of a difference. All right, slide 50, our final slide for this whole chapter, folks. All right, so the other type of mutation is called a frame shift mutation. And that's when a nucleotide base, like an A, a T, a C, or a G, has been added or deleted. So it either increases the length of a gene or it reduces the length of a gene. In this situation, I want you to look at A and then look at example B and figure out which one, A or B, is a frame shift mutation. Or are both. It says determine what type of frame shift mutation occurred from A and B. So in your notebook, you would write slide 50 get the definition, and then write A equals, 
And in the A example, you can see that the length of the nucleotide or the nucleotide sequence here is a certain length. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It's 12 base pairs of nucleotide. 12. You can hear though, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. You can see that one of the nucleotides got removed or deleted. This is a, for example, A would be A equals a frame shift mutation because there's been a deletion. So you'd write A equals frame shift deleted nucleotide. And then to finish answering number one, you do B. And you can see here that there was originally one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine nucleotides at the top. And now there's 10 because right here, there was between the T and the G, an A nucleotide was added. That means this frame shift mutation involved an addition of nucleotides. So you would write B equals a frame shift mutation with added nucleotide. Final thing to do for this slide is to compare and contrast the two forms of mutation. What's similar between a mutation that's a point mutation and a mutation that's a frame shift? So look at your notes for the definition of a frame shift and look at your notes for the definition of a point mutation. Right here. What's something they share in common? What's, a, what's, what's similar about them? What's one thing that you could say is common between those two mutations? And then finally, what's something that's different? What's the difference between a point mutation and a frame shift mutation? So for number two, you'd write similar equals. What's similar about these two forms of mutations? Point and frame shift. And then finally, you'd write difference equals in your notebook. And what's one thing that's different between these two? All right, we are wrapped up here, folks. Hopefully, we've talked about some things you thought were interesting along the way. And hopefully, you feel like you've learned a little bit more about each of these little mysteries. Get ready for the Chapter 11 project, because we're going to be using all these concepts to solve an important problem. With these two twins, these two identical twins. So the next thing we'll be doing is studying these identical twins and figuring out what kind of mutations happen with them to make their phenotypes so different. What happened to their DNA? What proteins were affected by the mutation? Get ready and good luck. Have a great day.